Uh, for those of you who don't know the Createx uh, paint system, it's basically a water-based uh, water paint that works similar to acrylics, but they have additives rather than using water. So the, you know, the end costs a little bit more, but the nice thing is, is that it's multi-surface. Uh, acrylics don't stick to a lot of surfaces, uh, especially if they're not porous, whereas the Createx pretty much sticks to, as long as the prep is done correctly, it'll stick to leather, paper, wood, metal. Uh, it's used on automotive uh, airbrushing a lot, which is something I'm getting into. So it's very, it's a lot more versatile. And you can add in different additives like the balancing clear and things like that uh, that allow it to act as a urethane rather than just an acrylic. Uh, so it tends to be a little bit more water resistant. You can also spray solvent finishes over it so the finishes can be stronger than what acrylic can take. So uh, this is one of the reasons why I switched over not too long ago, uh, about I think about two years ago, and have been happy with it. It also allows you to use true candies, which one of my later videos is going to be on doing true fire flames. And that will be with like all the transparency and all that kind of stuff, which you cannot do with acrylics. So it just allows you a little bit more flexibility. As you notice, I found that uh, wood skewers were great for mixing paint in the cup of the airbrush. So I don't need to waste a bunch of plastic cups. Alright, so I'm going to turn the camera and you'll be able to hear me. You'll probably not see me a whole lot except for my hands. Uh, but yeah, hey, Ali, yeah, no, it was just uh, the Mormon missionaries decided to stop by and say hi. <laughs> Which we're not Mormon, but they do that every so often. So let me get this in position here. Yeah, anyway, since uh, Createx is sponsoring these videos with uh, materials for us to enjoy, which is nice, uh, I'm flying their banner. So yeah, a little bit of shameless plug in the background there. Alright, so we've got the, the raw sienna loaded in. Basically, it's a base, I did already do a base, base coat of black to simulate black leather, which is what I work with most, so it's just kind of what I do. Uh, and then a real quick dusting of white for those that are just showing up. And this is basically what I would do on a leather piece. So we're going to take our raw sienna and just start layering in lines and the more we do the more it's going to show up but these are basically broad stroke lines you're not getting anything detailed this is just a set like an undertone so the whole piece will be covered and we're setting our intensity right now anything that's darker obviously as you can see, the, the Sienna is not covering it as much. And that just gives you a little bit more shadow and gradation. And notice as I'm moving up to that branch, I'm not coming across the, I'm following it the same line, because that's the way the grain would run in the tree. It's going to run. Yeah, and people talk about, they're worried about overspray with airbrushing inside their homes work with the the correct air pressure which like I said right now I'm working with about 15 about 12 to 15 per, uh, pounds of air pressure in the airbrush and it's I'm not even really dancing color over on the black here and I'm not shooting detail this is a pretty wide shot so as long as you have your air pressure and your mix correct you can run right up against it and not have to worry about the overspray so that overspray is a myth it's, it's more operator error than anything okay so now we've got our background of the C Ross and now we're going to start working in more defined lines as you come up to this branch you'll notice that on a lot of wood with the branches in this area right here the the grain will tend to run up and then it comes back up on itself as it makes that turn and we can simulate that you know when we come into that same thing And notice the air doesn't stop when I'm actually airbrushing. It's I'm just leaving the trigger down so the air is running. 
and then moderating my finger on the trigger as far as much, how much paint is coming out. So I think somewhere in this area we're going to drop in a, um, a knot here. I'm going to start forming that. Just little circles. That way it kind of gives it the impression. It'll make it a really not a very deep knot, and that way it just sits on top. We can use some shadowing to give it some effect there. Go on, Jeremy. Glad you make it. Just starting out. Now along these edges, you know, here and here, I really need to define those, and so I'm going to follow up on that with the sienna. Just get it a little darker there. Because those will be our hard edges once we unmask this thing. Use the tape as a, as a physical mask, so you're literally going to spray about halfway over the tape and spray away from here so you're not shooting paint off on that side. To be honest, I don't know how well this tape's going to pull off this paper. <laughs> I haven't tried that before yet. It's always been freehand on the paper. We'll find out. But fortunately, since it's paint, we can always fix it if we need to. So I've got a little bit of the sienna left in the cup. I'm not going to dump the whole thing. I'm just going to spray some of it out. And to make sure we have a good color transition between the sienna and the brown, what I'll do is I'll mix the brown straight in. It's a good practice to get into is to actually count the, the number of drops since we're working with such little paint uh, most of the time. So typically you want to work with about 20 to 30 percent reducer when you're working with leather. So literally I've got 20 pen drops of paint in here, five or four drops of uh, reducer, and then I'm going to drop one drop of the balancing clear in here. And this literally changes the composition from a water base to a urethane. It's still safe as far as you know, it's not it's not a solvent. Uh, I do suggest wearing when you're not shooting videos and you have to be heard, uh, wearing breathing protection. And I'll show you what I use normally. Real quick, while I'm thinking about it. So this is this is the uh, the RZ mask, and these are actually pretty cool. You can get them on Amazon. They're about uh, 15 bucks. They've got replaceable filters on the inside, and they're real nice because they're actually just a Velcro, so they just strap on real fast and easy. And they're pretty comfortable, they're adjustable. Uh, but you can see here, it's really easy to put on, take off. And they've got a, a dual filter on them, and the filters are pretty reasonable as well. Uh, but rather than using paper masks that don't quite filter out everything, or a super expensive paint mask, that actually works really, really well. So we're going to, we've got our brown mixed in, and you can see I mean, it's still brown, but there's a little bit of sienna mixed in there. So we're going to throw that on there now, and this is where we're going to start defining certain lines. And you'll see the sienna come out there first, and it's going to change color.
Of course, the closer you are, the better, the thinner the line you're going to get. You need a broader stroke and back off. Or just... You don't want them to be perfectly parallel and going the same direction. So, they're you know, very, as long as they're running the same grain direction, they can waver a little bit. And we're going to want them to waver around that notch. You can see his brown is more of a more of a real wood color. Especially when it's laid over that seat that sienna. It's literally just drawing lines. Let me check that tape real quick. It makes it funny to say all you're doing is airbrushing lines on, but they're really, as you layer it on, it starts to show the... the depth as you go on. Use your lighter colors each 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 stage you're going through. You want to use the lighter colors to kind of set the tone for your next color. So you can see that I'm starting to lay out that knot a little bit more, give it some some depth and shadow. And that's just kind of give myself an idea of what I'm going to do there. Now as you get going with these colors, remember to clean your tip off because you'll also start to get some buildup and it's not shooting as cleanly as it was before. You just use a paper towel. If it starts to get really mucked up, these little guys here, these studio wipes, work really well because they're actually, they actually have airbrush cleaner on them. And I just take one out and let it sit out because they're actually pretty damp so if I let it sit out for a little bit it dries out a little bit more and it's easier to use. Now remember as you go on to these smaller branches the grain is going to be tighter because it's a smaller diameter. So you want to be closer and layer the same lines. I'm just going to back off and I'm going to dust some more of this brown on here.
It's terribly exciting, isn't it? Watching wood grow, I guess. So now I'm gonna switch up to the next color. Same thing. Yeah, once it stops, it'll be easier to hear me. Unfortunately, this microphone is almost too good. It picks up everything. I'm wondering, I'm trying to see here on the feed how much you can actually see of the painting. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit. Let me see where I'm at now. brown in there than I thought I did. Alright, so next step up we're going to work into the sienna. The sienna is a transparent color so it's not going to be real dark and basically we'll get to the, the darker color later on. But if you want darker you can actually just mix in one of the darker colors. I wouldn't suggest black to the brown but uh, adding like raw umber to the brown just one or two drops to darken it and help define it that way. You want to reserve black for like the darkest details. You really don't want to do a whole lot of black. Uh, just simply because it's, you know, that's going to be more of a shadow. You're not going to see a lot of black in an actual tree unless you're talking about ebony or something like that. But for the most part, we'll use a little bit of it later on, reduced down. And when I say reduced, that simply means uh, this. 4012 reducer that actually is the equivalent of water or uh, if you use the golden system you know about the airbrush medium and the uh, the airbrush medium is simply water that doesn't dry out as much uh, with the with the golden system so I'm going to turn this a little bit and work this way so what I do is I left a little bit more of the brown in there and then I mix the sepia straight into it. And from there I'm going to start same thing, just layering in more tones. Now this is where you don't want to start doing like half length lines. Earlier I was doing really long lines. This is where, with the dark, as the darker colors you step up, you can start doing like half lines where you start here and then you restart that line next to it, just like a wood grain would, wood grain wood, like a woodchuck. Now the sepia being a transparent color, it's, it's basically just going to darken the colors underneath it. So you don't want to load it on there. It won't look like it's, you're getting much on there, but just be conscious that it's not uh, its not going to lay down its own color, so it's going to look thin. Uh, just make sure you're not overloading it, because that's all you really want, is you want it to darken the colors underneath it and give you that tone. Now with the knot, when you're looking at the knots, uh, start thinking about where your light and your dark sides are going to be, uh, where your light angle is coming in from, because you got to remember to throw in a shadow and a light spot to highlight it to give it that dimension. So let's just say, you know, for example, this is going to be, you know, light angle this way. So you're going to see more, you know, brighter color here, darker color over here for the shadowing. Uh, to give you an idea of the depth and then you know maybe a little dark here to, to highlight that ridge
but then don't forget you got this branch you have to transition into. Yeah, we're going to go tip. We don't have to about 20 minutes in. It's not bad. The 4040, Jeremy, that is what's called uh, bleed checker. And Jeremy's asking about this one here. This one is literally uh, an intermediate coat to block similar uh, base materials from bleeding together. So if you're using, especially when you're using candies, it's very important to use something like that uh, in between your coats. Because what it does is it locks in the color from the, from the coat underneath from the coat you're applying on top. So like right now, I'm doing a lot of like letting the, the colors bleed together just to get my tones and variations. Uh, but if I want to lock these colors in so that I can shoot like say a white on top of it without the white pulling that brown through and turning a muddy color, a muddy white, what I would do is I'd shoot the 4040 over this that locks in these colors and then I can shoot my other colors on top knowing that they're not going to pull through because these these it uses a dissimilar uh, base for its uh, for its carrier and therefore the colors can't transition through it whereas uh, the 4030 uses a similar base as the paints and so unless you let it fully cure paints can still migrate through the 4030 so that 4040 is just it's, it's basically a lockout barrier it's like it's like a uh, intermediary uh, uh, top coat you can throw on there and I'll actually do that in a minute here because I'm not wanting to bleed too many colors back in. As you can see, I'm doing like a wide path with this sepia, or this uh, yeah, sepia. I'm just starting to, to dance in some fine lines, just a little bit finer than uh, they were before. It is, yeah, resist is a good term for it. And we're going to... That's why I shoot the 4040, but I want to keep my sepia mix. I'm just going to grab another airbrush and shoot it through that. If the airbrush was clean, I would shoot it through that. There you go. So I literally with the 4040, this is the 4040 here. I'm literally just spraying a good coat. It's kind of like when you're oil painting and you'll use a... Um, a varnish in between to block out some of your layers after they dry. We just let that dry. And the other thing too is with the 4040, let the compressor stop. Turned out I grabbed the wrong gun, that's why I wasn't spraying as much as the other minute ago. Let's see here. Yeah, there. Okay. So we switch back. And for the uh, for the main painting, I'm actually just using a revolution, which is the the 0.5 
uh, I want to go. It's the, it's the entry level gun, so it's not like I'm using anything really crazy special or anything like that. If I was doing some like finer details, and I would you know, bring in one of the other. But so you can see, now that I've got that 4040 down there, that sepia mix is starting to stand on top of it a little bit more. in some of that raw umber and we're going to do the same thing as just only partially empty out the cup and not actually completely empty it and then same mix I'm only doing about 15 or 20 drops of the paint to about 4 or 5 of the uh, 4012. Now this umber is not a transparent color like the sepia is, so it's going to stand out more. So at least that's the plan. This is where we really start to define this darker color. Now if you notice that it's not dark enough, maybe because of the, the paper you're using or the background, you know that black is gonna be you know, coming through a little bit. You always add like one drop. No? <laughs> Alright Ellen. Uh, you add like one drop of black just to get a little bit more body. That's really all the black is for, is just to add into other colors.
Yeah, you need a little bit more tip dry here. For some reason the ember does that. So just be aware of that and, and keep it handy. Uh, oh, you know, you can tell in the uh, in the colors, like, uh, for example, a like yellow is uh, is fairly transparent. You can see how you can basically, when the light comes through, you can see, you know, the other paint behind it. Uh, with the sepia, and you can see, you can see the light through the bottle, but there's paint on the side of the bottle. Uh, whereas with the brown, that's, that's a more opaque color, you know, more solid color. So that's just, it's just knowing the colors a little bit and... This is where I'll start doing in more of the detail of the grain. So we're learning that paint does not, or tape does not like to stick to paper. I was kind of freckling it a little bit. Let's move away. Basically, moving the trigger back and forth, doing it spots. The wood is not perfect. You can highlight those spots. Doing a little tail, like little mini knots and things like that. And for some reason, this gun is not. Shooting really well. I don't know if it's dirty or something, so I'm going to switch over to a different one real quick. Bear with me like clean this one up. But basically, as you can see, like, the whole idea behind it is just layering color and with the lines to create that illusion of the grain. It doesn't have to be super fancy or detailed or anything like that. Uh, obviously, on the smaller toolings, you're going to have to be a little bit tighter with the thing, so a 0.5 airbrush is not going to 
cut it, but at 0.3 like the Eclipse or some of the uh, uh, Chinese knockoffs will definitely do the trick. Let's see how it's going. There we go. We'll just keep layering these lines. Notice I'm like leaving, I'm making sure to leave some light spots in there. Just to give it that more realistic feel. I'm going to shadow this side a little bit because this is light angles this way. So I'm going to shade this side of the tree a little bit more. Of course, the underside of the branch. So you can see it's starting to get that effect. I'm going to turn it a little bit more so you can see what's going on there. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dump out about three quarters of that uh, raw umber. And then add in some black, just one or two drops. And then thin it out. So I don't want the black to really show up too much. More just a shade of it. You keep a piece of paper handy so you can do test <clears throat> tests on it. Let's see here.
Uh, this mixture is due a little more. Some more lines. Well, you see what I'm actually sitting in front of the camera. I'm going to turn this back so you can actually see it there. And again, just bobble it out and trail off with a tail because of the look of like a crack or something that's happening there or a smaller knot that's starting to form Yeah, it's a little dark, but you start to see that coming out. Yeah. Now again, I'm not sure what this is going to do when we actually peel tape off of paper, but we can take a look and see. Because that's pretty much the technique I wanted to show you in a nutshell. Obviously, if this was a client piece, I would have masked it off a little bit better. Come back into our mixture here and obviously on leather, this is going to be over tooling and all that kind of good stuff, so. You'll mask it a little bit better, but just to get the technique shown there. You see, actually, has a pretty good. Let's see if that makes a difference to do that. That's actually a pretty good, pretty good looking piece of wood there. So I get that, should get the uh, idea across so again, just to kind of recap. Start out with the raw sienna and then mix in, leave a little bit in the cup, mix in your with your brown. And then next up is going to be your sepia. And then from there you're going to move to the raw umber. And then finally just add a few drops of what's left of the raw umber 
with the black and then thin that down quite a bit and use that for your shading <clears throat> and that's pretty much it five color wood grain technique so thank you very much for watching and if you have any questions feel free to uh, drop me a line in the comments thanks